to do the dream job and uh, we're quite often unhappy people. You really need to speak to me in the middle of third seven, David? We have a brand new championship leader. And you're aware of being under investigation? I just heard it now. Okay. The second Puebla E Prix is round nine of the championship. This signifies the start of the second half of the season. Yeah, it's been a while. It's amazing that uh, we, we can get some atmosphere back, and uh, especially here in Mexico, a great place to, to have that back because the fans are very enthusiastic. And uh, yeah, it's a uh, good back alive at the racetrack. Andre Lotter, he is an incredibly competitive driver. He's very, very fast. And then you've got Pascal Verlein. He's got this shot at becoming Porsche's big name driver. And he makes the move, and there's the move for the lead. Verlein ahead of Nato. The Porsche hits the front. We are still quite new in this championship, so um, our learning curve is, is steep, and um, I think we have the pace to win races, and that's definitely a target of, of the second half of the season. I suppose like every sort of junior racing driver working your way through the ladder, Pascal is focused on what happens in the car. The media, the sponsorship agreements, the TV, it's all peripheries. In interviews, he can be sort of quiet, but I don't think that takes anything away from who he is as a person. He takes time to think about his answers. I still consider him an emotional person where the bad results do really affect him on, on those days. You know, like five years ago, um, if I had a, a bad day, a bad qualifying, I didn't want to talk to anyone after the race. I was crying and, and, and being angry and like, I've changed a little bit with, with age and I'm a lot more open to it now than, than I was in the past. And uh, yeah, maybe that's also part of, of getting older. <laughs> Formula E is a lot more difficult on the mental side. I never doubt myself or if I can do it or not. Um, I always believe that if I extract the maximum out of myself, the result will be there. I never doubt that uh, I cannot do it. Pascal Verlein takes the checkered flag in Puebla and there's the disqualification. Dude. Um, so yeah, we've got some some bad news. Fairline will be desperately hoping that nothing else goes wrong, um, and you know so will his teammate uh, Andre. At one point, was the most disqualified driver in Formula E, and I don't think it's something he enjoyed at the time, and he isn't going to have been enjoying it now. Well, you're never satisfied. You always want better, you know. So uh, it's 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 something uh, that's in our nature. We're in eternal unsatisfied people. Uh, I mean, uh, unless you win uh, every race and you're first in every session, then you can be satisfied. But it, it's a funny combination because we do the dream job, and uh, but then we we're, we're quite often unhappy people or, or unsatisfied because we're so performance driven. Andre, to me, is an, in Formula E, is an enigma. He hasn't won a race, but he's won in everything else. Sports cars, GT cars in Japan, Super Formula. He knows how to win in everything, and he's a bloody good driver. Lodera dives down the inside of Roland. Incredible move. Andre's got a little bit of harking to the old school. You know, in some respects, I think you could quite easily see him fitting into, you know, the Le Mans documentary that was done by Steve McQueen or some racing footage from the 70s. Lotterer hasn't necessarily uh, shown the best of his driving ability this season. Um, I think there's more than a few people in the paddock with a few complaints about some of the things he's done this season. And Lotterer's in the gravel. What a f***ing idiot, Lotterer. What a genius. Uh, the season so far has not been the best, uh, to be honest. But you have to have a pretty high level of confidence because you need to, to walk out there and own this. And it has to be your thing. And uh, it just doesn't take much for things to go well or wrong. So for sure, Formula E is the most difficult championship for that. Our job, it might look busy on the race weekend at the track, but we actually think of it every day. So sometimes, yeah, to just disconnect, 
and not think of all this pressure and performance. Uh, it's, it's quite relaxing and photography is definitely something where you just completely focus on something different uh, and uh, I, I like it because also it has a technical aspect uh, to, to set up the camera right and everything so I trained my eye I guess uh, uh, to, to look at cars from the right angle but I like to photograph people I, I never get bored so that's fine. He does like to enjoy himself but he you know he races and he races with a passion but he enjoys life with a passion and uh, there's quite a few times when we had a stunning night out and it was literally straight onto the flight the next morning. Do not pass go, do not collect 200 pounds, just go straight. Yeah. I think uh, we're trying to do something here, Lucas. Oh, <laughs> but is it Leo? <laughs> Hello. He wants to see the cars. It's his son. The second race of the weekend here in Mexico is round nine of the championship. This is how the grid is going to line up. Vondre Lotterer, he starts 10th on the grid. And then the front row, Pascal Wehrlein looking for redemption after being disqualified from the race win yesterday. Oliver Rowland, the pole sitter, could move to the top of the championship if he wins the race today. All five lights are on and we go green in Puebla. Good start from Rowland this time and it also looks like a good start from jean eric Verne Mortara is coming up alongside Pascal Verlein. Mortara is up into second place. Lynn and Buemi are going side by side. Nick Cassidy's getting involved in there as well. Damage for Stoffel Van Dorn. This is close quarters racing. Oh. <laughs> there you go, crunch of carbon fibre. Okay, let's invest now. Let's invest now. And that's a second attack mode, is it, for uh, Verlein? Yes, it is. So Verlein goes for a second attack mode and it was so close. And Cassidy is through. Lotter in deep into the uh, right-hander and oh, and he's squeezing Sims in the wall and he's just not letting him through. What the f***, Sims? They completely pushed me off. Sims forces his way past in the end. Uh, something broke, mate, in the front right. Yeah, Sims is going to pull off at turn one. Verline wants to win this E pre still. He's got 20 minutes plus one lap to go. Okay, you can unlock fan boost and you to overtake. Verline through into second place. Verline right up behind Mortaro. Really hard to pass because the race is so fast. Look at your last picking you have to do. I'll come back to you quickly. Oh, and the Costa, Costa yep. in the wall at turn seven. You really need to speak to me in the middle of turn seven, David? I'm out. I'm really sorry. sorry. Andre Lotterer, who was once in fifth, has dropped all the way back down to 17th. Can Pascal Verlein put yesterday's heartache behind him and overtake Mortara for the lead? I can't get close. Almost lost it in turn seven. Verlein's dropped way back here from, uh, from Mortara on this lap. The Rocky Venturi of Eduardo Mortara, who comes through the final corner, wins in Puebla. Well done, Edu. Well done, Edu. Yeah! Verline in second. Check it back, P2. Yeah, thanks, guys. So, we have a brand new championship leader, Eduardo Mortara. News is filtering down to us here in commentary, and I'm guessing also to the Tagoya Porsche team on the podium that, yet again, Pascal Verline is being penalized. This time, it's for improper use of fan boost, which means a five second penalty. And you're aware of being under investigation? I just heard it now. Okay. Would be a surprise if we are not um, again under investigation today after yesterday. Um, so let's see. Nick Cassidy will move up into second place. Oliver Rowland will be promoted to third. And Pascal Verline will finish a heartbreaking weekend by dropping down to fourth. We used the fan boost too late, which means that we couldn't use the full power. Not really sure why you get uh, a penalty when you put yourself into a disadvantage, but that's how it was. And uh, yeah, we will do it better for the future. I think we have the most dysfunctional team that pulls together when we need to. Throw a little bone to a bunch of lions, they're gonna fight for it. They bang wheels! And good to says thank you very much! Jeff is moody and passionate. He's like, I'm gonna kick this guy's ass. And there's the attack from Vern! I'm someone that hates bullsh. Can you cut? Yeah. Please. 
If you like that and want to see some more, then hit the subscribe button.